إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله قتقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد Last time we were here about a month ago we mentioned an advice of Luqman and today we will continue to finish the advice the last advice, just for a recap, the last advice we talked about Luqman, he said to his son, Ya Bunilya in Naha in Taku with all a habbat in the Khordal, Fatakum fi Safrati, Aufi Sarawat, Aufi Aub, Yakti bi Allah. He said, Oh my son, if an action, if it be the size of a grain of mustard seed, meaning no matter how small the action is, and it's hidden inside a rock, or it's hidden somewhere in the heavens and the earth, it doesn't matter on the day of judgment, yet be Allah. Allah will bring every single action we have done, good or bad, Allah will hold you accountable for them. So, so this the, in this advice, Luqman wants his son to know, to be aware that Allah Azza wa Jal is always watching us. Every action we do, Allah Azza wa Jal said, Subhanallah, Ahsawullahu wa Nasuh. Allah Azza wa Jal preserve our action. He recorded them, and you and I, we forget them. We do them and we forget. But Allah Azza wa Jal, on the day of judgment, Luqman, he wants his son to know, hey, my son, know that everything you have done, Allah Azza wa Jal will hold you accountable. So after now, his son is focused on the action. The next advice that Luqman is going to give him now, he says, and now he will tell him about the most important act of worship you and I should do. He said, Ya Buniya. You see, every time he wants to give his son a new advice, he says, him, he says, Ya Buniya, oh my beloved son. He calls him with a beautiful name. Oh my beloved son, Aqimi Salah. Establish the prayer. Wa'amur bil ma'aruf, wanha anil munkar. Wasbir ala ma asabak. Inna dhalika min azmi umur. Subhanallah. Let's break this down. The first thing he said to his son now, in this next verse, he says, Oh my son, establish your salah. Today, you and I, we know that's five times a day. In their time, Allah alam. But we know the salah is the most common act of worship that Allah Azza wa has commanded all his believing servants. The other ummah, they were also commanded by Allah to establish their prayer. Even prophets and messengers, subhanAllah. That shows you the salah is a very important act of worship. Allah Azza wa when Allah first met Musa alayhi salam, imagine, Prophet Musa, when Allah first spoke to him, Allah said, Oh Musa, I've chosen you. So listen what I'm going to reveal to you. Innani ana Allah, la ilaha illa ana fa'abudni wa aqini salata li dhikri. SubhanAllah. Allah Azza wa says, Oh Musa, I am Allah. I am the one whom none has the way to be worshipped except I am the one, the creator of the heavens and the earth. So Allah commanded, gave him a command. فَعْبُدِنِي So worship only me, O Musa. Allah is telling his prophet Musa, the message of Allah. Allah told him, worship me alone and establish your salah for my remembrance. Even the prophets, they were commanded to do this. And they are better than you and I. Then we go to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says to him, Allah commands the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that recite from what we have revealed to you from the, from the book 
Meaning the Quran. We cite the Quran on the people. And wa aqimi salah. Establish your prayer. Allah said, verily the salah. Inna salata tanha anil fahsha wal munkar. If you do your prayer the right way, you are consistent in it. You are attentive. You pray five times a day. You don't miss it. Allah said it protects you from major sins, sinful actions. Look, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Khalilullah, the friend of Allah, he will make dua. Rabbi ja'alni muqima salati wa min dhuriyati. He makes this dua. Imagine, Ibrahim have to make dua, oh Allah, make it easy for me to perform the salah and my children. You see, Luqman, he's already praying, but he's advising his son. You and I should take a lesson from this and follow his footsteps and advise our kids, our children, advise them to pray. Just like you advise them to do their homework, advise them every day. Make sure you pray your five daily prayers because the salah is the second most important pillar in Islam. The Prophet Muhammad SAW says, Bunya Islam ala khams. Islam is built upon five pillars. Without the pillar, what happened? The building will fall down. So your Islam, it will crumble if you don't do these five pillars. For the lack of time, I will mention the, the first two. To show you, the salah is number two. The first one, shahadati, an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadu rasulullah. The first thing on the list, for you and I to be a Muslim, we have to believe without a doubt, you have to testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone. And there is no confusion in this. You have to believe in this. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. You should have no doubt in this. After believing in that, after accepting these two testimonies, then what you call me salah, you establish your prayer. Very important. This is why this wise man, Luqman, he's advising his son for a reason. And Allah recorded it in the Quran. So you and I can take a lesson from it. Allah commands the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <clears throat> Allah says to him, وَأْمُرْ أَحْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا Allah told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, command your family members, command your wives, command your children to establish the salah. And not only establish it, وَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا To be patient in offering them. Because you and I know we have to do our five daily prayers all the way until when? Five years? Ten years? Twenty years? Fifty years? No. As long as you're alive in this dunya, you have to continue praying your five daily prayers until the death come and take your soul. Forever. Subhanallah. Brothers and sisters, please, me and you, I'm included in this. Let's not take advising our kids to pray five times a day lightly. Don't play with this. Subhanallah. Listen, the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is said that the one action, they were all in agreement, all of the Sahaba, Abu Bakr, Umar, Ali, may Allah be pleased with all of them, they were all in agreement that the Salah, the one who abandoned the Salah, the one who don't pray five times a day, is not a Muslim. Some scholars today, I'm telling you, major scholars, if they find out, if someone died and they find out this person abandoned the prayer, they will not pray upon them. Because the salah is the second most important pillar. You can't be a Muslim if you abandon it, subhanAllah. And where is the proof? Is that we don't say things from our desire. No. We bring proof. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Ahdu ladhi baynana wa baynahum salah Faman tarakaha faqad kafar. SubhanAllah. Allah Akbar. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said that the thing that distinguishes between you and the non-Muslims, the difference, the thing that's apparent from the eyes, the thing that distinguishes the Muslim and the non-Muslims is the salah, the five daily prayers. Because when Adhan comes, guess what? The Muslim, you will see him do the wudu and go and pray. That's the difference. The non-Muslim, he will sit down and don't care. But the Muslim, he will rush to go pray. That's the difference. The Prophet said, whoever abandons the salah, whoever leaves up the salah, faqad kafar, he has disbelieved. This is not my word. This is the word of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why we are saying, don't take it lightly to advise your children. He also said, Baina rajuli wa baina shirki wal kufur tarku salah. He said, the barrier, the thing that distinguishes, the thing that protects us from shirk,
associate with partners with Allah. And Luqman, he already advised his son. Inna shirk azim. He advised his son already. Avoid shirk to associate partners with Allah, to worship other than Allah, and disbelieve. The Prophet is saying, the thing that protects you and I from falling into shirk and kufr and disbelief is the salah. Don't abandon it. Subhanallah. And remember, this Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Allah said about him, وَمَنْ يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْحَوَى He don't speak from his desire. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Everything he said is the revelation from Allah. It comes down. Everything the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said regarding the deen, regarding the religion, is from Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet told you and I, مُرُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَهُمْ أَبْنَاعُ سَبْعِ سِنِينَ Subhanallah. He said, command your children. Ah, this is not a choice. He said, command your children to pray at the age of seven. Listen, I took psychology a year ago. One of the things they taught us is that kids at the age of six, seven, that's when they start to use their prefrontal cortex. They start to use their intelligence to think, to understand things. Though Islam is telling you, at the age of seven, Command your children go to, to go pray. Command them. You get up and pray. I'm not giving you a choice. Get up and go pray. Subhanallah. Now nobody said now. What did you alayha wa hum wa hum abinahu ashri sinin? He said, then beat them. We're not talking about hit them in your face. No. Get up and go pray. Beat them at the age of seven. At uh, ten. At the age of ten, beat them. Now listen. Seven years old, you command them. At the age of ten, beat them. For three years, you are, you are doing what? Commanding them, encouraging them. For three years, that at the age of 10, they should be used to it now. If you are consistent in commanding your children, for that three years, inshallah, Allah will make it easy for them. At the age of 10, wallahi, it will be easy. It's part of them now. Then he says, At the age of 10, make sure you also separate your children. Don't let them sleep in, on the same bed at the age of 10. The Prophet said that. So subhanAllah, now there's an argument about some parents. When they hear this verse, uh, this hadith, they'll say, no, I don't want to force my children. I want to give them the choice. Let them make the choice to pray five times a day. Leave them. Allah will guide them. No, I don't want to force them. I don't want them to grow up and say, you forced me to pray. I ask the same parents, the same thing, and they don't know how, they don't know how to answer this question. I ask them, okay, no problem. Let's say I go with your argument. How about you leave your children not to go to school? Give them the choice. Tell them, hey, my son, hey, my daughter, it's up to you. Do you want to go to school? No? Okay, khalas. Okay. You won't do that. No parent would do that. We, we would force our kids to get up. Get up and go to school. But when it comes to the salah, when it comes to the akhirah, no, it's okay. It's their choice. Wallahi, subhanallah. That show you and I. A lot of times when you ask the parents, Jannah and the, the dunya, what do you want for your kids? Every one of us will say, we want our kids to make it to Jannah, make it to Jannah. You see, they always say what? Action speaks louder than words. It's one thing to say, I want my kids to go to Jannah. But then you are telling them to, to do what? To go to school, but when it's time to pray, you don't care. It's their choice. If you really want good for your children, you will do what the prophet said. Command them at the age of 30, encourage them. You beat them lightly, go pray. You don't play with it. Because what? You want good for them. That's what Allah said. Minkum man yuridu dunya wa minkum man yuridu al-akhirah. Allah said, from among you are those that want the dunya. Those that want the dunya, they will encourage their kids to chase the dunya. When it comes to the akhirah, no. And I'm, you can balance them. You can encourage the kids to go to school. But at the same time, you go to your school, you tell the principal, hey, listen, my son, at one o'clock, he has to pray. Yes. If you allow your kids to go to school, do that. No one will stop you. In this, in this country, alhamdulillah, freedom of, of religion, you are free to go to your principal and say, my son, my daughter, have to leave class at one o'clock to go pray. Wallahi, they will not fail. I did it through that my whole year in high school. I didn't fail. You will not fail. Trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah says to you and I, Ya ayyuh al-ladheena amanu, ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara, nara wa quduha al-nas wa al-hijara. He said, all you who believe, save yourselves. 
Save yourself, meaning start with yourself. You pray five times a day. You fast Ramadan. You pay your zakat. You make sure you worship Allah alone. After you make sure about your own iman, guess what? Now, you also protect your family. You encourage your family from the fire of hell. Allah said the fire of hell, the fuel of it is man and stone. May Allah protect you and I from that. بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. so the advice of Luqman is not finished yet. after he told his son يا بني يا أقيم الصلاة. what did he say after that? he said وأمر بالمعروف وانهى عن المنكر. beautiful. he said oh my son enjoy the good and forbid the evil. سبحان الله. this is the reason. Luqman, after telling his son to make sure you pray, to make sure you don't do shit with Allah, now he's made sure his son protect himself from falling into bad action. Now, he said, oh my son, don't just stop there. Go out in your society, go out to your community and enjoy the good and forbid the evil. He's encouraging his son to be a good influencer. He wants his son to be a good role model, a positive influence in society. Do we encourage our kids to do that? Luqman is telling his son, now, alhamdulillah, you work on yourself. But my son, don't just stay home. Make sure you are someone that go out and tell people to do good and encourage people to stay away from haram. And Allah Azza wa Jal gave us the same advice in the Quran. You see, the advice of Luqman, this is all everywhere in the Quran. Allah is telling you, you want to do the same thing. SubhanAllah. Allah says, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّتُمْ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ Allah says, let there be from amongst you people that will rise up and call people to good. Al Khair. The scholars, the tafsir, Al Khair in this verse is Al Islam. We have to give da'wah. Call people to, to Islam. Allahu Akbar. Because Islam is the highest form of good. To submit to Allah alone and to believe in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the highest form of good. Let me give you an example. Someone who don't have that Islam in their account, they die. They go to Allah Azza wa Jal, MashaAllah, they give sadaqah, MashaAllah, they were good, MashaAllah, they did all these good deeds. But the one thing that's missing in their account is Islam. They didn't worship Allah. Guess what? All of that good deed will go to waste. Because that needs to be established. That's what Allah says to you and I. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqu Allah haqqa tuqatih. Fear Allah as he deserves. Wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. That's the wisdom in that. Allah says, do not allow mouth, uh, do not allow a mouth death to come to you, except you are in the state of submission. You submit to Allah alone. You only worship Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah said, let there be among you people that will call to good, that will give da'wah. Those who go out and enjoy righteous action, they encourage each other. Hey, let's pray. Come on, it's time to pray. Let's pray. Let's fast. Let's do this. Let's give sadaqah. MashaAllah. And then if there's any haram, he said, no, brother, let's not do this. Let's fear Allah. Let's be people like that. Allah says, if you do that, you will be from among those who are successful. Allah Azza wa Jalla praises this ummah, this nation. Allah praises us, the creator. He praised the followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعَرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ Allah Akbar. Allah said, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ We don't need someone else to tell us that. Alhamdulillah, it's in the Quran and we believe it. Allah said, you Muslim, you the follower of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are the best people raised for mankind. You are the best. Why? What makes us the best? So you have to make sure you follow this uh, ayah, this verse. You have to act on it. Because Allah said, what makes you the best? تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعَرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ Is that you go out, you enjoy good, and you forbid evil. Whatever is haram, you, you speak up about it. You don't, you don't be quiet. We Muslims, we don't turn a blind eye. No, we want to be a positive, a positive influence in society. You want someone to say, you see that guy right there? Don't do bad in front of him, because he will call you out. We want to be like that. 
Speak up for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. So that's what makes us better. Allah says, We believe in Allah the right way. We believe Allah without shirk, without associating parties with Him. We believe that Allah alone deserves to be worshipped. We believe that Allah is the master and the rock of the universe, of everything that exists. And we believe that Allah, no one is like Allah. No one is compared with Allah. His attributes befit His majesty. You can't compare it to no one. Allah Azza wa Jal, Jalla Jalal. SubhanAllah. So, brothers and sisters, this whole advice about enjoying the good for being the evil, it shows us that we Muslims are supposed to be good role models for, for our society. A Muslim can live in the ghetto. Guess what? You hear this a lot. Oh, it's his environment. You know, he had no choice. He had to survive. He had to survive to sell drugs. He had to survive to murder people. He had to survive. No. Surviving is to be patient. We, we Muslims will live in the ghetto and will be the past. will be a light. We will not fall into our environment. You know, they always say, oh, he's controlled by his environment. No, we are controlled by the Quran and the Sunnah. We go by that, no matter what, where we are. That's what the Prophet Sassam said. He said this, Man ra'a minkum muk, um, He said, Man ra'a minkum munkaran. He said, whoever among you see an evil action. This is beautiful. He said, you as a Muslim, you are walking and you see something bad happening. Let's give an example. A woman is getting robbed, or anyone, a person is getting, is getting robbed. And you see that as a Muslim, the prophet said, there's levels to this. You see something evil happening in front of you. The first thing is, is what? You change it with what? Biyadi. With your hand. Meaning you take action. If you are able to change that bad action, if you are able to do something to physically act, then do it. فَإِلَّمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِ But if you can't act, if you can't do anything, if you can't use your hand, if you can't do anything physical to change that evil, the prophet said, with your tongue, meaning speak up. Muslim, someone with iman, the higher his iman is, guess what? Either he will act or he will speak up against evil. He will talk about it, no matter what. He will speak up for the sake of Allah Azza wa But, فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَدِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ iman. But if you can't even speak up, meaning you are, you are afraid of your own life, that's okay. You feel like, no, I don't want to put myself in trouble. I can't speak up, but guess what? The lowest thing you can do, the least thing you can do, is to hate the evil within your heart. And that's the lowest level of Iman. But today, we have Muslims that go out of their way. They will go to riot with the LGBTQ group. What is the Muslim doing in this group? SubhanAllah, how does it make sense? How can a Muslim support something that Allah has made haram? You see, Muslim will say, listen, I support their right to do whatever they want to do. You support their food? Why do you have to support it? If, yes, we can't do anything about it. No problem. I agree. You can't change it. We live in a free country. They can do whatever they want to do. Yes. You can speak up, definitely. They can't stop you. You can speak up, but at least in your heart, hear it in your heart. If you say, I can't speak up about it, but at least in your heart, you should see homosexual and say, oh, that's disgusting. You should say that. Wallahi, that's the lowest form of Iman. I'm going to continue with Luqman's advice. Luqman, because I see the time is going. Luqman, he tell his son, after that, after telling his son, Oh my son, wa'amur bin ma'aruf, wanha anil munkar, he said, wasbir ala ma asabak. Oh my son, be patient on whatever difficulty comes your way. This is the father, so I love this advice. He's being realistic. He's telling his son, this dunya is not easy. Oh my son, you are young, but let me tell you something. The dunya is difficult. Things will come your way. I'm telling you to go out and give da'wah. If you're giving da'wah, you will see some people will curse at you. They'll make fun of you. But be patient. Be patient. Every difficulty, don't fall down. Don't let it break you. Hold on to the rope of Allah. Be patient. But those who are patient, Allah, Allah said that he will give them reward. Be lady hisa. Allah will give them reward with no accounting. Those who are patient. Allah tell you and I that he will test us without a doubt. Yeah, he will test us with fear. What jurum, what naqasim in amwal, what anfus, what tamarat. He will test us with loss of wealth, with loss of lives. You will lose people in your life. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Either you go first or they go first. But be ready. It's going to happen. Subhanallah. And then Allah said, وَبَشِّرِ sabirin. Give good news to those who are patient. Who are those people that are patient? How do we know someone is patient? This is how you know. Allah says, 
قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون. Allah said, when they are tested, when something difficult is happening to them, these people that are patient, they will immediately remind themselves, hey, we belong to Allah and we shall go back to Allah. This is temporary, whatever you're going through in this dunya. Be patient. Allah said, those people that say this at a time of hardship, difficulty, I know we all have difficulty in our life, whether it's sickness, loss of job, loss of wealth, whatever it is, you know your test, but be patient. Allah knows about your plight. And Allah has all the help is coming. That's what Allah advised, Allah told us about those that are successful. He said, What the wa saw bi haqqi, what the wa saw bi Allah wants us to advise each other to, rec- to you know, tell each other to be patient. When someone is going through hardship, remind them, have sabr for the sake of Allah. So this is the advice of Luqman. You know, Luqman advice is so, is so beautiful. Every khutbah I've given about Luqman advice is one verse. That's the benefit. Every, every advice, I have to make a whole khutbah about it. That show you that story, there's so many benefits in it. There's two more advices left, two more left. Hopefully I can finish it next time, inshallah. May Allah Azza wa Jalla guide you and I. May Allah Azza wa Jalla make us true Muslims that will stand firm. May Allah guide our children. May Allah make us all that as Muslims. May Allah bless you and I with Jannatul Firdaus. Allahumma inna ka afuhu tuhibbu al-afuhu afuhu anna. Ya muqalib al-kuloob, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Ya muqalib al-kuloob, thabbit qulooban ala deenik. Ya muqalib al-kuloob, thabbit qulooban ala deenik. ربنا آتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة